of the things that's most unique about the American Victory is that she's a fully operational ship. This is the real thing. This is actually a ship that functioned in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. We could take her underway under our own power and, and produce the electricity, the water, everything an operational ship would do. Most museum ships that you can board these days are uh, in a non-operational status. That's what's so important about this ship is it's still running. Not only that it survives as a static display vessel, but it still actually can get up and go. This is a war of cargo ships. The shipyards of America are working day and night, but building them is only half the job. The SS America Victory was part of a shipbuilding program that brought victory to the United States and to the world in World War II by delivering the goods the troops needed to win the war. Bullets, bombs, beans, telephone poles, tanks, trains, you name it, these ships were capable of carrying those for, through a variety of methods. Really, I don't know if that's reflected enough in the history books, but this, this ship and the ships like it were really the mainstay of that war effort. This ship was built in 1945. They laid the keel, I think, about the first day of April to the last day of March. And 55 days later, she was launched. For the uh, invasion of Japan at the very tail end of World War II, and if you're familiar with your history, that invasion did not happen. So the Victory Ship went on to serve in the, the rebuilding of Europe, some of the island hopping campaigns, as well as serving in Korea and Vietnam. She's one of 534 Victory Ships that were built during World War II. Today, only three of those still exist. It served all the branches of the military and was crewed by the Merchant Marine, which was a little bit of an underreported uh, service during World War II. In fact, had the highest casualty rating of all the services in World War II. It's one giant artifact that people can explore and really, uh, really put themselves back in time. The American Victory looked really rough when she first got here. It took a lot of paint and powder. It took a lot of elbow grease from a lot of great volunteers to get her into shape. I have been volunteering on the American Victory for over 18 years now. The people who work on it are keeping this ship alive. They're keeping history alive. So there's a link between the past and the future. This is the link. Come on, follow me. We're standing between the boilers right now. That's the port side boiler. And over here is the starboard side boiler. And one day when I was down here, I began reading this plaque and the, the, boy, the boiler was built in Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, this is a VC-2S AP-2 type vessel, which is the Victory type ship, and I noticed that the date that it was first tested says 4 and then 12, 1945, so the boilers and the engine were hydro tested the same day that President Roosevelt died, and the engine is the same engine that's been there ever since then and it still functions today. That's why this ship is living history, not dead history. Just follow me down Shaft Alley here. Right now we are actually below the water line and uh, these are different sections in the shaft. It has the different sections where they can oil it and make sure it's lubricated. And we go further and further aft towards the back of the ship. This would be turning as the, as the propeller, the, shaft, the ship was underway. This number 130 indicates this is frame number 130 on the ship, and I think we go all the way back to 147 before we get to the part where the propeller shaft goes out of the vessel and it goes outside underwater and connects with the screw or the propeller. And that's right down here. When you think about the folks who served on board these ships, you had a crew of 62 in World War II. And those guys came on board and smelled the same smells and saw the same sights, felt the same heat, sometimes felt the same cold that you feel when you come on board. And it puts you back in time and puts you in a place where you can identify with what they were going through and, and, and put yourself in a mindset of the mission that they were working towards attaining. Right now, we're in the aft steering section, uh, the aft steering flat, you could call it. It's the very back end of the ship. We're a couple decks below the main deck. And uh, the way that this would work is they always have one person down here for, in a case of an emergency. So when we go on our cruises of Tampa Bay, someone would be down here. And should we lose a fuse or a fuse blow out up in the, in the wheelhouse, they could call down here. 
using this sound power telephone from the wheelhouse. And I'll turn this on right now, I'm turning it to number one, which indicates I'm contacting the wheelhouse. I can use this crank. Once I've received instructions, I would be able to control the ship, the direction of the ship. I'd be able to control the rudder by using these wheels. I just turn them according to the instructions that I'd received from the wheelhouse. And I would maintain contact with the wheelhouse by talking on this phone right here. And so we can actually steer the ship from here, even though I cannot see outside. I just obey orders and tell whatever the helmsman was telling me to do. I do it down here in aft steering. While the American Victory is no longer operational in a maritime capacity, she still serves an amazing role in our community. We do a lot of training for active duty and reserve troops. We bring FBI, law enforcement, firefighters, uh, working dogs, and more on board. She's a very valuable piece of this community and, and really provides a platform for training that other communities just don't have. One of the most amazing events we do on board the American Victory is our Relief History Cruises, where we actually get underway, sail down the channel with veterans of all ages on board. We have reenactments on board and we have uh, entertainment. It's a fun day for everybody. But what's probably the most meaningful is that we have a lot of vets on board, including uh, World War II vets. And it's one last chance for them to really relive the way that they experienced life years ago. And it, it really does bring a tear to your eye. It's an amazing, uh, amazing day on the water uh, always. And it's a, it's a treasure to be out there with those guys. It's called the American Victory uh, Mariners Memorial and Museum Ship, so it is a memorial. But I think more than that, it's a tribute to those who have worked on board these ships. When you go to Busch Gardens, when you go to Disney, you're getting a replica of, of maybe historical places. When you come to this, this is not a replica. Maybe you can't simulate the heavy seas, maybe you can't simulate the incoming artillery fire, but what you can simulate is what it was like to be moving throughout the ship with a mission in mind. And I think it's uh, the folks that come on board, especially the folks who have their family members who have served and grandfathers and, and grandmothers, and, and they kind of can put themselves into that role and it's a unique, unique experience for them. When people come on board this ship, very often uh, they've heard their grandparents and their parents talk about what it was like. But when they actually set foot on this ship and they experience, for example, when you come on board the ship and it's in August and it's hot and it's hot on this ship and they realize this is what this ship was like. Even for a few minutes, they are experiencing what their loved ones experienced 70 years ago, that helps them to appreciate what it was like to actually live and work on these ships uh, that many years ago. You'll find us in the Channel Side District, oftentimes nestled between a couple large modern cruise ships. Uh, we're behind the Florida Aquarium. Take a look at our website, AmericanVictory.org, and uh, also social media. The ship was home to a lot of true heroes over the years and still is today with a lot of the great veterans we have on board. It's a treasure to come down and I encourage you to get down here and experience it yourself.